Good evening and welcome to Brookwood Church. My name is David Hardy. I'm executive pastor here at the church. And I just wanted to welcome you here. I want to welcome you to the 2019 graduation ceremony for Brazier Middle College Charter High School. And to the graduates, I want to say congratulations to everyone here. If you find yourself on a Sunday morning with nothing to do, we would love to have you come back and visit us right here in this room. Uh, again, we want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your celebration, and we appreciate you being here tonight. Good evening and welcome, graduates, faculty, staff, family and friends, for attending the graduation ceremony of Brazier Middle College Charter High School to celebrate the class of 2019. It's so surreal this day is already here. We as students have gone from waking up on the first day of school, stressing about which polo to wear and tuck neatly into our iron khakis, to excitedly getting dressed today in our caps and gowns. It feels like just yesterday we were in the gym on our first day of school, being forced to scream, hard work pays off by Mr. Sinclair. We were all so nervous and confused, but excited to meet new friends and cherish new memories that we'll have with us forever. As we celebrate entering the next chapter of our lives, let's cherish and value the moments and memories we've experienced to get to this point. I know that personally, I don't take any moment at Brazier for granted because it shaped all of us into the people we are today and everything we experienced meant something. We've all changed a lot over the past four years, whether it be by realizing that learning to wait till 1 a.m. to study for a test just probably won't work, or that sweating little things just isn't worth it. I know that seeing my peers so dedicated to doing their work kept me motivated to do mine, and I think in a sense we all just motivated each other. We made group chats, studied all night and day, and we even made time to have fun at big sporting events like basketball games. We even rescued our school mascot, Benny the Bingo from Southside Christian, and that's a night that I'll never forget. Our class has definitely composed of motivated leaders, where we participated in different organizations and clubs to help benefit the rest of our school too. After years of tears and grit, we made it. All of our hard work has finally paid off. At first, it sounded like something Sinclair just wanted to scream at us because it sounded catchy, but I think we all came to realize how true our school motto really is. Hard work really does pay off, and that's what we're all about to so proudly walk the stage with different honors and accomplishments. The teachers at VMC definitely played a huge role in the growth of our class, and we thank them for the hard work and dedication that they put into us. They taught us that with time and effort, you can produce your best possible work. Even the simplest things at Brazier, like the friendly custodian smiling and wishing us a good day, made high school such a memorable time. At Brazier, it's just the little things. We made friendships that we never thought we'd make. We were shaped into people we never expected to be, and we all came to the realization that we are capable of doing anything that we put our minds to. We proved it, and we are here. Thank you, Mr. Sinclair and Ms. Freeman, for keeping us on the track and path to success. Thank you, Ms. Cruel, for bringing fire and school spirit to all the pep rallies of only 400 nerds and making it the best time ever. Thank you, Brazier, for providing an environment that allowed everyone to be themselves comfortably and allowing us a space to grow together as a family. Although we are throwing away our khakis and polos, well, at least I am, and going our separate ways to different careers, colleges, and aspirations, we will always be Bengals. A piece of our hearts will always be with Brazier, for it was our cozy little home with carpets and couches for four years. A piece of our hearts will always be with Brazier. I've always met, I've met some of the most incredible people at Brazier, and I know that all of us students have the brightest futures. Even though we only won like two pep rallies, again, we will always be Brazier Middle College Charter High School Bengals. Thank you, family and friends, for encouraging us to keep pushing and doing our best. Thank you to the staff at Brazier for preparing us for our futures. And last but not least, thank you students for making high school such a memorable time. As they always say, once a bingo, always a bingo. Thank you. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated.
been asked to create a reflection speech for today's ceremony, I wanted to share something interesting and nostalgic. Something that could remind us all of the journey that led us to today and of the future that lies ahead. And in an effort to give you all a short break from the more traditional speeches you're here today, I created an original poem. As we graduate today, we can think back to when this moment seemed like a lifetime away. When we were only worried about the next assignment or test, when there was no concern about being the best. Think back to that first day, when our only concern was finding our way. Time seemed so simple way back then, when we only imagined the future now and again. But now it's already time to say goodbye, to see if our parents and family members can keep their eyes dry. This moment is bittersweet, but as we move our feet out the door and on to more, we can always remember what was and look on to what will be, because now we are finally free. Free to move on, to take the next step, but I urge you please never forget. The tests that you took, the essays you wrote, all of the work that kept you afloat, the friends that you made, the people who helped you to become unafraid, the teachers you loved, the ones who loved you, the ones who pushed you to make it through. But as you look back, don't get distracted, don't dwell on the past, although all of our times were surely a blast. The future calls too, so pick up the phone and always remember to embrace the unknown. Thank you. Good evening. Brazier opened 13 years ago in 2006. And today we celebrate our 10th graduating class. I appreciate the hard work and commitment of each student, parent, faculty, staff member that created the opportunity to make this class a success. Sitting in this group of students are first generation high school graduates. Some of these students have medical conditions that they face every day. Some of these students have to take care of ill family members. Some of them have lost a parent. And some of them have to navigate very difficult family situations every day. But while doing all of that, they were able to accomplish one of their first major goals, to graduate high school. The faculty, staff, and board treat graduation as a respectful, proud, and dignified ceremony to honor these young men and women. And I know that all of you, parents, grandparents, friends, other family members, will join us in recognizing the significance of this 10th graduating class. So as excited as I am to see you graduate and move forward and find those paths that lie before you, I do have some last thoughts I want to share. First, I want to focus specifically on the importance of being unique, special, confident in yourself and your beliefs, seeking truth because it's true, not because it's a popular idea. Oscar Wilde wrote, be yourself, everyone else is taken. And although that's a humorous statement, there's a lot of truth there. In this world of overwhelming social media, unfortunately, it's easy to envy those we see, to covet those that what others have. To become left always wanting more, always judging others or judging ourselves. It's so easy to live life through the lens of a camera on our phone, trying to capture that perfect video to share with others or the perfect picture to post. We as parents can be very guilty of this as well, always trying to capture that life moment in video instead of being fully involved in the real memories. But life is so much more than a digital quest for attention or accolades from others. Life is to be lived, experienced, smelled, touched. Conversations are to be heard, not just read in a text message or in an app. Emotions are to be felt. And some of those emotions are fantastic. And sometimes they aren't. But they're part of being human. They make you unique. Rock, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else, is the greatest accomplishment. And a big part of being yourself is holding firm to your beliefs, to your goals, to your morals. Our society wants us to believe that truth is relative. It depends on the circumstance. It depends on the day or the people involved. No wonder we see a rapidly increasing number of young adults impacted by anxiety and depression. Because our society tells us we should always be happy, comfortable, 
followed by 10,000 Instagram followers. Well, at least our Finsta account. But I want to assure you that those things are not what gives you value. In her book, The Five Second Rule, Mel Robbins wrote, we are all so afraid of uncertainty that we want to guarantee before we even try. We want evidence that if we take a risk, we will get the girl. It's a numbers game. To play any game, though, you've got to start. To win, you need to keep going. And if you want to, your dreams to come true, you need to get ready for a long game. Life is not a one and done sort of deal. You've got to work for what you want. Picasso created nearly 100 masterpieces in his lifetime. But what most people don't know is that he actually created more than 50,000 pieces of art. That's two pieces of art a day. Success is a numbers game. You're not going to win if you keep telling yourself to just wait. The more often you choose courage, the more likely you'll succeed. So you must be brave. You must get started. You must know what you believe. You must know your goals. You must know what success looks like. Not to others, but to yourself. And you must work hard. You can't let circumstances define who you are or what's ahead of you. And using Mel Robbins' example, start making art now. You don't have to wait. Look how that approach impacted Picasso's chance. So be bold, work hard, do good, and most importantly, treat others graciously. I want to leave you with this thought. I love quotes, and I've been saving this one for months just to share today. A bar of iron costs about five dollars. But if you take that bar of iron and you make it into a horseshoe, it's worth about 12. But if you take that iron bar and you make it into needles, it's worth $3,500. But if you make it into balance springs and a watch, it could be worth up to $300,000. Your value is determined by what you are able to make of yourself. So don't shortchange yourself. Be bold. Congratulations, class of 2019. I'm proud of what you've done.
Good evening, fellow classmates, family, and friends. This is an important day for all of us. The next few minutes symbolize the ending of a chapter in our life stories. For my classmates and me, it means leaving high school and moving out into an adult life. And for our families and friends, it means letting go while we grow in new ways. And for all of us, it's a time of great celebration and joy. Now, I've been told by some friends that I'm supposed to thank people or reflect on what I've learned in high school and tell some of my favorite memories. But if I tried, we'd be here all night. There are just too many people to thank. All of our families and friends who helped us get to this room tonight, especially our parents, without whom we would not be here. All the teachers we've had and the faculty, especially the ones here at Frazier who have made our lives, who have made their lives about teaching us and helping us grow. The previous generations who sacrificed their time, energy, and ultimately their lives to give us the chance to experience this life in the fullest. To all of you and everyone else I had to mention, thank you so much for all you've done to help us get here. We can't hope to ever repay you. As for my favorite memories, I have too many to count. I don't know if I would talk about senior project struggles, cross-country meets, or time spent with friends. It's been an amazing four years and I'm proud to call myself a Bengal. And now because I can't think of any stories to tell, I'm going to talk about one thing I enjoy more than I should. That's mathematics. I know many of us haven't studied algebra 1 in quite a while, so here's a very quick overview. Solve for x. Algebra teaches us to analyze and solve problems. We're given equations and told to find an unknown value. And for much of my life, I thought of reality in a similar fashion. To me, life was an equation that if I could just find all the right numbers, it could, I could solve them and I could perfect my reality. I wanted to dictate how my life was going to end up. But as I've learned, life isn't about being perfect. It's not about solving equations, and it's really not even about the end goal. Life is about the journey, and the experiences along the path towards your destination. Everything around you is a variable that makes you, your equation, and your life story unique. The theme for tonight is a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I believe the man who penned this, the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, was intentionally vague with his words. We really don't know anything about the journey we're going on. We know where we want to end up, and we know the journey will be long, but really that's about it. Here's another quick math lesson. In geometry, we learned that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's what most of us see our lives as, a timeline, a smooth process from start to finish. We think I'm gonna do this, and then this, and then my life will be perfect. We don't account for the journey along the way, and we only look at the destination. But here's a fun fact. There are no naturally occurring straight lines. The concept of a straight line is a geometric idealization. It's a perfect idea that cannot and does not perfectly apply to nature. It's the same way with our plans for the future. We think that everything will fall into place just like we want it to, but reality doesn't work that way. We can see this idea more clearly by using a map. If you've ever used a map, you know that the road itself is a lot more complicated when you're driving on it than when you're looking at a two-dimensional depiction. There are so many complexities that we can't see until we're on the road, such as potholes, roadblocks, other cars in traffic, and the list goes on. There are so many things to distract us and keep us from our destination. These little inconveniences can make us pause, complain, and even question if the goal is worth achieving. They cause us to ignore the journey itself. We lose sight of the beautiful views of nature and of man-made creations that we have built from nothing. This is what happens when we lose sight of our goal. But if we look at the potholes and roadblocks as opportunities to stop and to admire our surroundings and to appreciate the journey, we gain a new perspective. Sometimes we move past our obstacles, and other times we're forced to detour. And even though the new path may be harder or longer, it makes the journey much more exciting and the end goal so much work, worth so much more. Now, I've been very general, and what I've said may not have made any sense. So here's an example from my life. My plan was always to graduate high school. We'll say that's my destination. But as my family was driving down the road of life, we came to an intersection in my eighth grade year. We could continue straight and follow the path that we'd set, our math and our plan for life, and homeschool me all four years of high school, eventually reaching graduation. Or we could turn onto a new road, go off the path we decided on and follow a new road, but still end up at graduation. This new road would be a lot harder. It wouldn't be comfortable for me, and it would be completely different from what I was accustomed to. But I was willing to make that change. 
and so my family deviated from the plan. We turned onto the road more Fraser Hill Park. And now that I've reached my goal, it's so much sweeter because I get to celebrate it with my classmates. The alternate road gave me a chance to enjoy the journey in a different way and made the end goal even better. So what am I getting out of all this talk of maps and math and stuff? Well, here it is, plain and simple. Just one turn, one traffic jam, one anything can change your life forever. But don't be afraid to deviate from your map because no matter how hard you try, you can't solve for X. There is no perfect equation and there's no perfect line. Instead, choose the best journey and go for it. Take the turns. Make your life an adventure. Maybe you'll get to your goal, or maybe you'll find a new destination. But what matters is taking the time to enjoy your life and to make it your own. The journey of a thousand miles has already begun. We're already on it. But you can affect your own path in a single step. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to be speaking today at graduation. To the class of 2019, it has been such a blessing to spend these past four years of high school with you, and so many of you have changed my life for the better. Even though many of us will part ways, we will still always share the bond of our high school years. I will never forget my Brazier family and all the great memories that I have made here. I know that we have all worked so hard to finally reach this moment. And I want to thank all the wonderful faculty at Brazier who made today possible for all of us. In your classes, you taught us about the subject, but also about life. Thank you for always going above and beyond to support us. To my fellow graduates, today is a major milestone in our lives. Our high school graduation marks a period of change. Recently, I have thought a lot about what the future holds. And I know personally that inevitable change can be scary to think about. However, I challenge all of us to view this change as an opportunity for growth and for chasing our dreams. As stated by Roy T. Bennett, don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind, be led by the dreams in your heart. Fear can only have power over us if we allow it to. We can instead use, use what is inside each and every one of us to break free from any group that it may have on us. Our dreams are so much more powerful than any of our fears are. One of the strongest things in this world is love. I encourage all of us to act from a motivation of love and concern for others and see the fruit that this bears. In these next years at college, or whatever our next endeavor may be, we will truly start our journeys to fulfilling our dreams and further discovering ourselves. Find what you love and chase after it. Be a light to those around you and be what spurs them on to do great things in the world. Remember that light dispels darkness, and when light enters a room, darkness no longer exists. There is only one you in this world. Each and every one of you has unique traits and talents. There is a purpose to your life that only you can fulfill, so use what you have been given to go and make an impact. As we move on to this next phase in life, let us not forget the foundation that we have, and let us remember what we value. We are graduating from the number one Charter High School in South Carolina. Take a moment to ponder this accomplishment. You are graduating as a winner and are already adequately, adequately prepared for the future that lies ahead. To connect back to what I said earlier about fear, a generation that encountered a lot of it was the World War II generation. I have heard it said many times that America's greatest generation was the individuals who lived through the Great Depression and World War II. These individuals, as a whole, are known for their perseverance and character. Courage allowed them to push back against any fears that they encountered. I exhort our generation to believe that if we exercise some of the same character traits as that generation, we could become an even greater generation than the greatest generation. Our world needs integrity, honesty, dignity, loyalty, and people who are willing to sacrifice for the sake of others. Someday, future generations could look back at ours and say they truly knew how to live the right way. I would like to conclude this speech with a quote used for the theme for this year's graduation. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Now is the time to take our steps onto our thousand mile journeys. I cannot wait to see what each of us accomplishes. I know for certain that there are wonderful things ahead waiting for us. Congratulations, class of 2019.
graduation is a dignified celebration of your students' accomplishments for the last 12 years of school. Their accomplishments came with the support of family and friends. Therefore, we want to honor you, as well as our graduates, by having you stand when your student's name is called. We also want you to respect each student honor, so we ask that you refrain from clapping or cheering until every graduate has been acknowledged. We want to make sure that each family hears their graduate's name called. Gianna Marie DeRosa, valedictorian, summa cum laude, and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. <coughs> Andrew Bryce McDonald, salutatorian, <coughs> summa cum laude, and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. Lauren Elizabeth Irvin, graduating third in the senior class, summa cum laude, and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. Chanel Eve Teplick, graduating fourth in the senior class, summa cum laude. Ashley Hannah McCord, graduating fifth in the senior class, summa cum laude, and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. Reagan Michelle Palladino, graduating sixth in the senior class, summa cum laude. Ashlyn Michelle Apey, graduating seventh in the senior class, summa cum laude, and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. Eva Marie Purcell, graduating eighth in the senior class, summa cum laude, and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. Valentina Iterago, graduating ninth in the senior class, summa cum laude. Benjamin James Jurgen, graduating 10th in the senior class, summa cum laude. Mason Mitchell Ashe, magna cum laude. Kenya Imani Adams, summa cum laude. Nicholas James Amos, cum laude. Olivia Madison Andrews. William Ryan Art, cum laude. Liam Eddington Baker, summa cum laude. Gracie Tate Bedingfield. Parker Von Blanton, cum laude. Zoe Catherine Britt. Tristan Gage Buckley. Lucas William Calvert, magna cum laude. Neil Patrick Cassidy, summa cum laude. Linda Madeline Clark, cum laude. Corey Mark Curtis. Chandler Drake Davenport. <coughs> Nathan Roger Dean. Victoria Noel De Casas, cum laude. Ariana Kate DeYoung. Cassidy Nicole Dixon, magna cum laude. Grayson Theodore Dotson. Peyton Michael Dubio, magna cum laude. Stephen Dean Dudar, magna cum laude. Mackenzie Leanne Duncan, cum laude. <coughs> Caroline Ramsour Earl, summa cum laude. 
Rachel Ann Etwaru, summa cum laude. Marion Chelsea Diamante Evangelista, summa cum laude. Ashley Jordan Fortner. <coughs> Valerie Nicole Fry Bettenker, cum laude. Thomas Hampton Fretwell. Hannah Jane Fugate, summa cum laude and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. Cassidy Ann Glenn, magna cum laude. <coughs> Julia Ann Goulet, magna cum laude. Maxwell Allen Hunt, cum laude. Brianna Jean Hutchins, cum laude. Caitlin Alexis Cargill, cum laude. Riley Melinda Kern. <coughs> Catherine Leah Kraft. Thomas William Kraus, magna cum laude. Audrey Estelle Lally, summa cum laude. Ethan Matthew Lamont, summa cum laude. Santino Joseph Longabardi, magna cum laude. Michael Alexander Lopez. Chad Wayne Lowe, magna cum laude and receiving a South Carolina Academic Honors Award. Madison Elizabeth Lowe, cum laude. Emily Rose Marshall, summa cum laude. Jade Audrey Martinez, magna cum laude. Alexis Faith McCullough, summa cum laude. Journey Christine McKinney. Nia Michelle McNabb, cum laude. Maggie Eileen McNeely, magna cum laude. Jasmine Elizabeth Michaels, summa cum laude. Lindsay Alina Morin. Alex Calloway Moses. Trinity Nicole Mullinax. Ashley Mumby Mongai, summa cum laude. Richard Wayne Neal III. Andrew Michael Newton, cum laude. Kirsten <coughs> Callie Nicholas. Jenna Lynn Opat, summa cum laude. James Bryson Padilla, summa cum laude. Sydney Giselle Pinochet, 
summa cum laude. Lindsay Camille Poindexter, magna cum laude. Colin J. Pointer, cum laude. Robert Allen Reynolds. Alejandra Rojas, magna cum laude. Angel Victoria Sarmiento, summa cum laude. Austin Heil Schatz, summa cum laude. Sarah Nicole Sheehan, summa cum laude. Jackson Robert Shirley. Evan Michael Smith. Destiny Shekinah Sullivan. Cameron Matthew Shemansky. Tristan William Taylor, magna cum laude. Jacob Aubrey Walker. Carrington Reese Williams, cum laude. Sloan Aaron Williams.